Pyro. He looks really pleased about this, and so does John. <laughs> He's smiling, you fucking sick bastard. <laughs> you got a ginger beard, dude. Like, you got a bit no beard, dude. Tip of ginger. Alright, guys, the ship's going over. There's... Ah! We're sinking! Hello, oh, boss! Oh. Help! Oh! I'm still. I'm still up. Oh, oh, oh! oh. oh I'm under. <laughs> Oh, lantern's turned back on. So I have been playing the Sea of the Scale test that has been recently going on by uh, Rareware in order to sort of, you know, test the servers in order to see if they can cope with a large amount of players playing the game. And uh, while this test isn't a fully indicative thing of the final product, it gives a sneak peek as to what can be expected. And honestly, I've been playing it and it, I've been stuck on it. I've been, I've been playing it non-stop all day for the past, well, day, and the, the previous scale test they did about a week ago as well I've been playing, and honestly, Sea of Thieves is looking up to be a really good game. Now, uh, I've been looking forward to this game for a very long time, and I've, I've always been the kind of person who's been wanting more pirate-themed games to exist, because, let's face it, pirate-themed games are a bit of a genre that we don't really see, like, pretty much ever. The only other game that comes to mind is probably Assassin's Creed, uh, what was it, Black Flag, or maybe one of those text adventure games you'll see from back in the day. So uh, this has been one I've been really anticipating for a long time. Plus, it's a chance for Rareware to prove themselves once again, because I think the last game that Rareware has created that I was really, really excited for was back in 2008 with Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts. Which, uh, I know a lot of people didn't like. I, I have a, a lot more lighter opinions of that game than most, but... You know, that was the very last game that I was really anticipated from Rareware, so it, it just feels nice to really anticipate a new game from them. But basically, it's a pirate simulator type experience where you sail the seven seas, you go and accept quests from trading companies in order to go and get treasure chests or provide objectives and whatnot in order to, well, earn gold, increase your reputation, and ultimately work towards being a pirate legend or something, which I don't know too much details about because the developers have been kind of very hush-hush about that. But in terms of the gameplay, I've not played a game like this, ever. Like the way that sailing feels, the way that the world is brought together, it just, oh, it feels so good. Like the the graphics, the visuals are spectacular, especially what they've done with the water effect here. And this is kind of a weird game as well, because from the get-go, you'd probably think this would be pretty much only a cooperative experience, because, you know, it's it, piracy is about having crews, and you have to work with your crews, and while this is true here, in, in fact, my favorite moments of the entire, the entire scale tests so far have been me working with my friends to hunt down other people or just find loot and whatnot. It's been a hell of a good laugh. Um, it doesn't mean you can't play solo. In fact, uh, the game does offer a solo option which is very manageable to do. Basically, in the scale test, there are two different types of boats you're able to uh, pilot. Uh, you get the standard sloop, which is like this tiny, tiny boat, which is usually for one or two people, which is usually is very weak, very easy to break down, but very fast boat, which prioritizes solo play. Because when you're playing solo, if you see a big ass ship coming at you, you know you're gonna hightail it the opposite direction. It's it's yeah, that's the sane way of doing things. So, and then the second boat is of course a full fledged galleon, which offers for offers gameplay for people of crews that have three players or four. I, you can't get any more than four player crews, which is a bit of a shame, but I kind of understand why, because it would make things a bit, a bit weird in terms of balancing, because this game is one of those games where balance is very important, from what I can tell. Like, they're not going to have any sort of items or weapons that will ultimately change the power flow of the game. Uh, it, even in the beta right now, all we got are cosmetic items, and all we're going to get in the final release, it seems, will be cosmetic items as well. 
And honestly, a lot of people may not like this because it's a bit of a... A lot of people like having that little carrot dangling in front of them to go, Oh, I gotta unlock this next uber powerful thing so I can destroy more people. But for me, that's never been an incentive for me to play online games. I play online games for the fun factor, and uh, getting the cosmetics and stuff are a bonus to just enjoying the game. And I think it's a really good approach to it. I've, I've, I basically love what the developers are doing with this game. Which is great because it really does seem like the developers behind this team, like if you watch the videos of this, are very passionate and into this project. So that's awesome. That's really good. In fact, it, it, when uh, this game first got announced, I, I thought it was just Project Dream, which was a game that was going to be made for like the Super Nintendo many, many moons ago. Because it, I don't know, it's just that feeling I had. I mean, clearly it isn't Project Dream, it's something else entirely, but it, it, I don't know. I don't know, that's, that's rambling anyway, it's, that's nothing to do with the game itself. But basically, the gameplay, extremely fun, and at times, oddly relaxing as well, like, uh, just sailing on the waters, I just found to be an incredibly relaxing experience, at least when playing solo. Now, when, act when you're actually playing with crews and stuff, what you'll find is uh, you're going to be working with teams of people, so you're going to be working with your friends, or maybe randoms that you can talk to, using the in-game chat. In fact, we met one American fellow at one point who was quite friendly. Uh, he was playing on the Xbox One and I was playing on Windows 10, which is another good thing. I love the fact that it's crossplay. But uh, when we're in the giant galleon ships, uh, it's a lot harder to control and maneuver. For instance, like if you're at the helm and you're trying to turn, um, you can't really see, so you need to rely on other crewmates to tell you, okay, there's something coming up on. X, Y, Z position, turn left, turn right, and basically, you're not standing there doing nothing. Everybody is always doing something, which is something I, I was surprised at, because I thought that once we've set sail, once we've set a destination, it would be kind of like Zelda Wind Waker, where we just sat down and wait. And while, yeah, you can do things that way, it's not ideal. It's really not an ideal way to get from position to position. And honestly, it's just a heap of fun, just shouting at your friends, usually rambling and screaming at them because they did the wrong thing. Or them shouting at you and vice versa. Uh, it's just a jolly good time. And uh, just doing the basic quests, I'm not going to touch too much on the quests here because I'm probably going to go properly in depth with the game when it releases. But uh, just, just exploring the islands and everything, it's just a heap of fun. I mean, there's, there's clearly tons of secrets as well as going to be in this title. Like, we've come across a good few islands that aren't even on the map. They're quite uncharted. And uh, we can tell there's going to be some stuff hidden in these islands just by looking around. Like, we came across one that has, like, an Aztec temple underground and loads of hidden cave structures. It's just... There's a lot of mystery to the game, and I, I'm actually really liking the fact that the developers are being kind of hush-hush about it. You know, they're giving us a bit of information, enough information to get excited, but not too much to give everything away. And, I don't know, I, I, I just have high hopes for this game, and this beta test uh, has basically sold me 100%. I am honestly expecting this to be a fantastic time. However, one thing I will be completely honest about is that I don't think this is going to be a game for everybody. That's mainly fueled by the fact that out of the five of us that we were playing the beta on and off, um, two of us were really unsure about the game to the point that they they weren't sold. They basically did not like the look of it at all. And the third one of us was a bit more unsure about what the final product would be like. While uh, three of us were basically immediately go gushing about the game, me included, going, Oh my god, yay! So this is definitely a game where I think some people won't really enjoy it too much, because this is definitely not going to be everyone's cup of tea. Some people are not going to enjoy the sailing portions of this, which is the majority of the game, sailing from one island to another to another, or maybe hunting for shipwrecks and whatnot. Some people don't like that, some people would prefer a more action-oriented game. And even then, some people may not even like the co-op... Co <laughs> my words are failing me here. Some people may not like the co, co oh my god, cooperative, there we go, aspects. So, uh, yeah, this is me. This is definitely not a game for everyone from what I can tell, but I definitely am sold by it, and I am really mu very much looking forward to the final release. But with that, thank you all for watching. 
hope uh, this gives you a little idea to look at the game, I suppose. And uh, I shall catch you all again, maybe in March 20th when the game releases, or sometime past that, because I'm not going to get a video out the same day the game releases. I need a few days or weeks to actually play it myself, but that's beside the point. Anyway, thanks for watching, I'll see you after. Bye-bye.